be honest, it's um, a, a lot of the response was from, especially on radio or whatever, people contacts we've made through our previous stuff. You know, we've both got friends and, and allies we've been made through the years. But what neither of us know anything about is getting it to the right club DJs. And, yeah. like, and that's what Moshi Moshi have done. Uh, Moshi Moshi yeah. made that happen really, really well, and the people they got on board yeah. were the right people. And um, they kind of, you know, in a slightly hands off way, just kind of eased it in the right direction. But this is your first live show tomorrow night, isn't it? tonight, in fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you nervous or excited or both? I mean, I suppose the fence audience is as, as receptive and forgiving an audience as you're going to get. Yeah, really. it's, it's, it's definitely... Um, but they're also the people we want to impress the most. Yeah. And so they're our friends and our families and musically. And we'll be um, glad if people genuinely don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, Johnny. It's all right. I suppose that's, that testifies to a degree, it must testify to the strength of the, the tunes because you, well, you know from the stuff you've been doing, it, it's not that easy just to drop something out there with no information and have people get really, really excited about it just out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. but it, was, it was a decision we made wasn't it? because... But was that just to be deliberately perverse or was it no, just specifically because you thought... Well, quite the opposite. We didn't want anyone to pick up the, this kind of disco record or mm. electronic pop record or whatever you want to call it. And, um, and say, you can really hear the folky leanings on this yeah, just because yeah. our names are on it, or you can hear the acoustic picking in this That's floor to the floor happened, filler. Yeah. It's, it started already, I saw one, and it's kind of yeah. bonkers. It's like, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, and how did it end up in the hands of Mushy Mushy? Was that something you were deliberately trying to do, find a different label to do release something that was a little bit... There was never going to be like a fence release, because mm. it was just it was, I kind of... It's just something that I didn't want to have to work too much and I kind of thought, if I'm doing the music, let's see how, how it can do elsewhere type thing. Mm. So, Is that because you didn't want to work the release yourself and, and do all the promotion for it yourself? Yeah, I was quite like, I want to try this out for a different audience a little bit. And I know that the fence audience will like it and I think, I think it's the sort of thing that it wouldn't, doesn't seem too out of place mm. on, on fence, given the sort of electronic stuff we've released over the last couple of years. Uh, certainly not on defense. Like, mm. you know, it's not out of place with def you know the defense stuff. So um, and yeah, it wasn't that. That wasn't the concern so much as the fact that I was kind of felt uh, like I didn't know an audience outside of that really. I've never played to like a dance audience. I've never played to like a uh, yeah radio audience. And that's what what happened. We we weren't looking for Moshi, we, but. I can't think of a better label for it. Yeah, it's, it's the tastemaker label for this sort of music. And, um, and when they got back to us, I would love it. Wow, this, is, this, this could actually be such. Mm. Because I mean, you don't know, you, you just sit in a room and you make some music together and then you think, okay, it's finished, what do we, is this any good?
Kieran had done before. Yeah, yeah, with school bands. I mean, your album is quite schizophrenic, I suppose, mm. in terms of from the acoustic all the way up. So it's been brewing, I guess. It's not just come out of the blue. It's a sound that I've kind of wanted to create that I can't create in my home, home equipment. And I'm fine with it. I'm can you really not? I mean, because that's what I was thought about electronics. It's like you, you can actually make it on a laptop if you're determined you to do extent. so. But I think there's some electronic not. stuff on Secret Sounds that sounds all right. But then there's some of it, like, it's obviously lo-fi and I've made certain, I've made it lo-fi mm-hmm. because there's certain things that, like a vocal is always going to sound a certain way if you're using certain equipment. Do you find then that, because musicians I often find will pick up instruments and say I wonder what the hell I can do with this and traditionally that's a something wooden idea. Yeah. Well I think that's what both of us do. I think that, you know, I I get a new instrument, I love weird instruments, I pick them up and I'll play them for a bit and I think okay what's this going to sound like underwater or what's this going to sound like if I play this upside down or if I reverse the strings or if I, you know, I physically change things um, in order to explore the instrument and that's what we ended up doing with a lot of the the, the, the electronic music. We were kind of saying, okay, what's what's the straight, you know, down the line way of doing uh, force the floor beat? Mm-hmm. How can we mess with this and make it our own? And, and but it took a long time to get that initial skill set. But when you say force to the floor beat, and you're saying you're sort of de- designing it for dance floors, have you kind of restricted yourselves then to a degree in what you do because it's aimed at a particular style? I don't. Or we're, I don't. We're capable of. of Focusing ourselves <laughs> that much, <laughs> we restricted ourselves in the sense that um, we didn't use certain things in the, yeah. on the record. So there's no guitars uh, at any point in the record. There's a couple of bass lines and stuff using a bass guitar. But there's no. We kind of said from the beginning we yeah. don't want to have mm-hmm. any guitars on this. And so that's kind of restrictions like that kind of informed mm-hmm. the direction of the music more, I guess. Whereas you, you, when you're creating your own solo stuff, picture solo stuff, I, I wouldn't put that limitation on myself yeah. in terms of like style. I just think. So if a nice acoustic guitar ballad pops into your head, do you try and rework it, or do you just shelve it for later? I mean, or is that something you do sort of as, we a, as a pair? You kind we, of we've worked really quickly. We haven't because we haven't started with an acoustic ballad mm. in mind. We haven't got to that point yet. Um, we didn't even write the guitars for that much, no, did we? There's no, no guitar writing really. Working out some chords and some things and then transposing that to keyboards. That's <laughs> quite um, Even that was, didn't really do much. It was mostly sitting around without the beat guy and then like, playing up some keyboards and the song would start to emerge. And... <laughs> I'll take it on advice then. If it's rubbish, I'm going to hold it against you. It's kind of creamy smokiness. <laughs> it's good. It's, yeah, it's, it's it good. I've no, tried it. It's good. Until this mm. Thank you. Mm. Cheers. Do you take sugar?